Court School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hello everyone, my name is Sean Deliot. I'm the service manager with Kearney Planners. Every year I get questions asked to me about what to look for on, their plan on your planner when you bring it in the shop in the winter time. There's a multitude of things we should be interested in and checking. First, we're gonna go over and take a look at the row unit. On the row unit, the first thing people usually look at is seedware blade, but there's a lot of other things we should be checking also. One of the things, main things you wanna check that gets overlooked quite often is the parallel linkage. There's eight parallel linkage bolts on each row unit. Underneath each bolt is a bushing. We want to check for wear within that bushing. We simply do that by going around the back of the row unit and pushing up on the row unit and seeing if there's any wear within those bushings. On this particular row unit, it's brand new, so there's not. You still should be, if there's no wear in your bushings, you should be tightening all these bolts up to the torque spec in your manuals. All the planners will have that. So really concentrate on checking that. That's very often overlooked, and a lot of times what that does is puts the rear of the row unit up and stops it from planting properly. We also do want to check for blade wear, bearing wear, and everything else. The quickest way to check for bearing and blade wear is remove a gauge wheel, check the bearing in that, set your gauge wheel down, and then check your, your blade. Make sure the bearing in there is tight. We want to check for the blade wear, and a lot of people just simply take a tape measure across the blade. In this case, that won't work properly because you've got a hub there, and you will get a false reading. So the proper way to do that is to take the blade off, as if we were going to take that off, and measure across the back face of it. Now the cutoff for all blades is 14 and a half. You want to make sure if it's under 14 and a half, you replace that blade. When you replace the blade, however, in between the two blades mounted on the row unit between them is a center scraper. Always change that center scraper, no matter what size it is, when you change the blade. They come as a match set. We recommend that you change that every time. And that will help you out. When you do change the blades, however, we want to make sure that there's the proper amount of closure in the blade. And that's the amount of space that it's touching. When you do that, a good trick is there's always paint on a new blade. Make sure you take your utility knife, scrape that off. We do every single blade here at our facility. So scrape that off. Then when you mount it back on, it will be metal to metal. And the way we check our blade closure is simply take two pieces of paper. Ensure that you're not using a playing card or a business card. It has to be paper. Everything else is too thick. Put it between the blades like that. You want an inch to an inch and a half. So as you can see, this blade is, is adjusted perfectly. The rest of the row unit, you want to check all your bearings. Make sure all the grease fittings take grease and make sure that nothing is bent, cracked, or broken. Inspect the whole row unit. One of the big things we see people overlook when they're inspecting a planter in the wintertime is wiring and hoses. Make sure you inspect all your wiring and hoses that there's no misleading in the, in the routing. You have to make sure that everything is routed properly with no spots where it catches or it could get caught. Check for rub marks, check for everything else. Also make sure that everything is wire tied down properly and make sure you only use black wire ties as white wire ties are not UV resistant and they will break fairly soon after you install them. So make sure you route everything properly. Go over the whole planner, check all the bolts and check make sure that everything is in working order. So when we're doing service calls in the spring, one of the things we see that's overlooked a lot is the hoses and the wiring by the hitches. All the time we get service calls where we're actually cutting or, or rubbing the coating off the wires and causing shorts and everything else. Also with the hoses we get the same problem, a blown hose. Most of the time the culprit is something in the three point hitch or that you've allowed the wires and the hoses to get down to the hitch down below at which time when you turn they get caught. 
One of the things to be conscious of in the winter time is figure out how you're going to hook everything up and route everything. In this particular case, we have it all routed up to the top, but to make this even better, we could attach a bungee cord up here and fasten it somewhere where we, to make sure when we turn, nothing gets caught. As we come back and we keep checking our stuff, we've got a cylinder here and a valve block here. Make sure in the winter that they're not leaking. We want to make sure that when we get to the springtime that everything's working well. And just keep following your path back to the planter. Check for rubs, check for pinch points. We don't want anything that could get caught in the springtime. So really what you're doing is just making sure you're preventing anything to uh, be caught. When we get back to the planter, there's a section in there with some hoses too, and all planters have it, whether they're a central pivot like this or not, where it comes off of the tongue onto the main frame. Make sure that all the hoses and wiring in those sections are also quite good. On this particular unit, we've got a bar out front for the fertilizer. Make sure when you're checking things in the winter time, blade wear again on here, make sure all the grease fittings take grease. It's a common problem we see. We get wear down the road, three or four years down the road, and it's been because people have not ensured that the grease fittings take grease in the off season. You're not gonna have time to do it in the spring, so make sure you do it in the off season. Check all your springs for no breakage. Check to make sure everything's adjusted properly. It's much easier to do it in the shop in the winter time than it is to do it in the spring on a nice warm day when you wanna get going. So make your way back on the planter. As you're coming across, check all the colders. Check your fertilizer boxes. Make sure there's no cracks or holes. Check to make sure that your lids have proper latches so that in the springtime, they'll stay on when you need them to. Just make your way across the planter. Ensure that everything takes grease. One of the things I preach in my clinics is to make sure that all the tires are up to air. No, you're not going out to plant right today, but you want to make sure that come spring that they're ready to go. If you put them to the proper adjustment when you're in the shop, when you recheck them right before you go to the field, then you'll find out if you've got one that's low. It can be fixed before you go to the field. So check all those kinds of things. As we make our way around the planter, we want to make sure that all our transmissions, all the bearings and everything in our transmissions are in good working order. Take them apart, check for play. Also check all your chains. Make sure your chains were properly ordered last year when you put them away. If they weren't properly oiled, make sure that there's no kinks and that they move freely. Always ensure that all the bearings and all the chains are working properly on the whole planter. On the hydraulics for the markers, ensure that the hose hoses are good and that there is no cuts or breaks on them. Check the bearings in your colder blades on your, on your markers. Make sure that they don't need adjusting. And make sure that all the bushings and all the pins take grease just like everything else. As we come around to this side of the planter, we have a transmission on this particular planter. Make sure that all the chains and bearings on that transmission also are working and functioning properly. Make sure that the chains are pliable and make sure that the tighteners are in fact working. Check to make sure all your gears are in your transmission, that you didn't misplace anything and that everything is there. Check your settings in your book to make sure that they do line up with what you've got on for the population that you're gonna be starting at. All those kinds of things will make your spring much easier when you do go to the field. As we come around the back and we go down the planter, we have contact tires here. This is a ground drive planter. And on this particular planter, you wanna make sure that your bearings and your tire is in good working order on your contact drive system. For those of you with hydraulic drives, ensure that your hydraulic motors are work functioning properly. You should be able to test those in the winter time simply by overriding the automatic feature. All of them ha usually have an override screw on the servo. Make sure that those all function and that everything is working properly on the hydraulic drives. For those of you that are electric drives, you should be able to make that planter work in the winter time. Test it in the winter. It's much easier than worrying about it in the spring, why it won't turn on. One of the things you don't want to forget about in the winter time is checking the hubs on your carrying wheels on any planter. A lot of today's planters are a lot heavier than they used to be. Ensure that you jack up the frame of the planter and check the wheel bearings. If the wheel bearings need lubrication, ensure that you do that. Also check to make sure that they're properly adjusted. Make sure that there's no play when you wiggle them once you've jacked them up. Always, always ensure that those bearings are ready to take a full season before you go out. 
So in the winter time, do not forget to get your meters looked at. This is a finger pickup for a corn planter. Make sure you take this to a reputable dealership that has a proper test stand and can set it up properly. Best thing to do is take a sample of your seed with you. That way you make sure that the seed that you're using in the spring is what's being tested in your meter. But always make sure you do it earlier than later. Everybody else is gonna take theirs in in April and it's best to take it in early. This is a brush meter. On a brush meter, we wanna be checking our brushes to make sure what kind of shape they're in. Here's a used one. You can see the difference, just even in the color from the seed and the treatment going through it. Ensure that the, pro the brush is in good enough shape that it's gonna allow the soybean seed to be held in. Check the stainless wear strip. Make sure that it's in good shape. As you can see, this one is just starting to wear a little bit right there. So make sure that it is adjusted properly. If you're not sure of how to set these up and make sure that the, new, the brushes are in good shape, take it to your dealer, have them check it over. Also with a brush meter, being a mechanical meter, we have two different plates to offer for that meter. Make sure you check it in the winter time according to your seed sizes that you have. The best way to do this is simply take the largest seed out of your sample and try it with your plates. That way you have an idea of what plate you're gonna use come spring. And always remember, do not put your plates in until just before planting and take them out as soon as planting is done. If you don't do that, you will ruin your br brushes on the brush meter because they will stay down, pushed down all the time. So while you've got the planter in the shop in the winter time, make sure you check everything. As we just discussed earlier, always check to make sure all your wiring is in good shape. Go across everything. As you get to contact tires, chains, check every single one of them. Check for your idlers, check for all that. We want to make sure that everything moves freely and everything is adjusted properly. Always check the frame also for fatigue and wear. Sometimes what we did last year is a little bit tougher than what we want it to be and we could end up with some uh, wear factors and fatigue in certain spots. So check all that. Fix it in the winter time. Weld it up if necessary or get somebody to weld it up if you're unsure of how to do it properly. As we go across the planter, make sure you check everything. All your hydraulics. Here we have the marker switcher. Ensure that it's not leaking anywhere. This is a limit switch on this particular planter. Also make sure that nothing is leaking externally for oil or anything else. We discussed the blades on the markers earlier. Make sure that they turn properly and that those bearings are adjusted properly. So that's just a very brief, quick look at what you should be looking at on your planter in the winter time. When you go to the field in the spring, ensure that you check those tires one more time. Check everything over before you fill it to go to the field. And remember, everybody have a good spring.